Hello and welcome, I'm the Logic Geek and today we're going to build a content management system from scratch in ASP.NET Core. In this tutorial I'll be using Visual Studio, but if you're on a Mac or on a Linux, Linux machine feel free to follow along using Visual Studio Code. You can download Visual Studio Code from code.visualstudio.com and if you're on the Windows machine, you can download the Visual Studio Community Edition, which is a really good uh, integrated development environment for developing .NET applications. So let's get started. Let's start with a new project. So we're going to build our own content management system for our own website. In this tutorial, I'll be focusing on the code behind and not so much on design. We'll get into that in a future tutorial. So for now, we're just going to use the basic bootstrap template where ASP.NET Core comes with and just change the menu and don't do too much about that. We are, however, going to add a database that can store our content, create an admin area, and well, you'll see. So how uh, let's call this application my website. I know not really original, but it will do the trick. Okay, there we go. .NET Core, ASP.NET Core 2.2. And we're gonna build a web application following the MVC pattern. Um, good to know, if you don't see ASP.NET Core here or ASP.NET Core 2.2 here, you can go to the website dot dot net which is probably a really expensive domain name go to download and you can download the .NET Core SDK, SDK here the 2.2 if you're still running Visual Studio 2017 not 2019 use this one to download a compatible .NET Core SDK for that so let's continue here on authentication we say that we want to have individual user accounts where we store the accounts in app. What, what this does is uh, in the basic template, ASP.NET Core identity is added and we already have all the boilerplate code for uh, authentication built in. We don't have to do anything special about that anymore. So let's create this project. There we go. Let's make this screen. So what we have here is a basic ASP.NET Core setup. So you got your www root, which contains your static files. Areas contains our identity logic. Controllers will contain our uh, controllers in the MVC pattern, model view controllers. These are the controllers. So these uh, bring the models to the views. Data will contain our application database context. This is what we need to access our database. Models will contain all our models, so our data objects. And views will contain all our HTML views. And those are stored into CSHTML files. And CSHTML files are HTML files that, where you can use C Sharp uh, logic in. And you have the Razor templating engine, which will allow it, which allows us to, well, uh, put data which we receive from our views into the HTML. We got our program.cs, that's the entry point into the application. Let's close this. Uh, the main method that's called is called, then it creates a web host builder and then it starts an internal web server. So just like Spring Boot and many other frameworks nowadays, uh, ASP.NET Core has its own built-in web server, which means that you when you compile this, you get one package that has it all. You can run it and you've got your web server up and running. If I, uh, here on the top, I can run it through IES or I can run it as a standalone application. If I run it as a standalone application, you'll see I will get a console window because this is just a standalone product. Uh, yes, I would like to trust the self-signed certificates. There we go, it's now loading, and here, it's now listening on HTTPS localhost 5001, and it's listening on localhost 5000. 
Uh, Firefox, by the way, does not accept uh, self-signed certificates. So just accept the risk and continue. And you see the everything that's happening here. You see your info logs. This is your basic template when you start a ASP.NET Core project out of the box. So you've got your home view, you've got your privacy view, register login. Uh, that's what ASP.NET Core identity uh, does. We've got a cookie snippet, which allows us to uh, give a cookie message. And that's it. We've got the generic template. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this as a base for our website. Let's close this. Let's close that one. Let's get car. Let's get started. So the way the project is set up is that whenever a request comes in, it immediately goes to the controllers. So when uh, you go to the privacy page, this will be loaded. When you go to the index of home, so to home, and this will be loaded, and so on and so on. So what we're going to do, I want to have a website where I have uh, a couple of menu items. I want to have a home page. I want to have a, my pro uh, the projects page where I can show off my projects. I want to have an about me page and a contact page. So to do that, let's create a controller per page. So right click, add new class. You can also do a controller, but I like to write things myself and don't get too much boilerplate code. So let's call this the projects controller. So the project controller is going to inherit from controller. Controller is the generic base class MVC controller, which makes sure that everything is working. Then we're going to create a new method called index. And that's going to return a view. So I action result can either return uh, a view or a redirect or a HTTP status code. Uh, index means that this is, uh, you can visit this at mywebsite.com slash projects and then it's going to load the index. So the first part of the word controller is used as the route. This is based on convention. You can also override, override this by going to uh, my projects. If I do this, then this uh, index will be available on my projects. But we're going to use the out of the box part for this because that's a lot easier. Now we're going to create a new directory here. Let's call it projects. And then we're going to create a new view called index. So because this is called the projects controller, if I have a corresponding folder in my views directory called projects, and then uh, for each view in projects, uh, as long as I keep the same name as my method, it will resolve automatically. So what happened here is first this was read because the file was not there, and now it can resolve it. So if I, for example, change the name of this one, then it says, hey, we cannot resolve this view. So ASP.NET Core is quite based on conventions. As long as you adhere to those conventions, everything will work out of the box. So let's give this a title, projects. And let's get, create the next one. So we're gonna create the about me controller. And we're gonna create the contact, con, contact controller. So the shortcut for creating classes is Alt-Shift-C. And we're also going to create an admin controller as we want to have an admin part where we can edit this page. So let's all inherit from controller. There we go. I'll give them an index. Should have been there. Yes. And there we go. Now we have to create a couple of more directories. So contacts about me admin. There we go. Let's close these. 
Now, if we go to uh, shared underscore layout, there's where our menu is. So now it says home and privacy. We got to remove the privacy one. And this is something we're going to duplicate. This is going to be projects about me and contact. And it's going to resolve to the controller contact, the controller about me, and the controller projects. What you see here is called a tag helper. And we're going to remove this ASP area because that's not needed. And there we go. And by the way, if you're thinking, hey, what's that? How is he able to select multiple lines at the same time? If you hold the Alt key while you move down, you can do multiple lines at the same time, which can oh, be very handy at times. There we go. So we have our nav menu. Uh, we're going to disable, actually, we're going to edit the login partial to not show the uh, register and login link. I only want to have a message whenever a user is signed in. So if uh, the current user is signed in, then show this. It's going to be for later on, but it's good to have that out of the way. Okay, uh, we're not going to use any cookies for now, so I'm going to remove that one. And the link to the privacy there is perfect. Remove that area as well. And the rest is fine. Okay. Now let's run it. Let's see if we've got our menu items and if it actually resolves to a route. So if it doesn't work, what we would have is it will go to a f an error page. So projects works, about me works, and contact works. Uh, let's change the title of those views as well, because of course we copy paste it. And now it says contact. About me. About me. Now it says about me. Perfect. And this is called admin. Okay, because the controller is called admin controller, if we go to slash admin, it will automatically resolve to this admin view. Admin. There we go. So we've got our basic website, our controllers and our views and our menu set up. Next up is creating a um, page model definition, which we can store in the database, which will contain the HTML of our pages. So that whenever you go click on projects, it will go to the database, fetch the projects uh, entry and will render the HTML. We're going to create an editor for that in the admin part. Then we're going to put some authentication on the admin part. And then we've got our basic CMS already set up. So let's get started. Let's start with a model. So we're going to create a page model. This is something called uh, a POCO, plain old C sharp class. This is a class that has a definition on how our, our table in the database is going to look like. So I'm going to give it a uh, primary key called ID. Actually, no, because the page name is going to be unique. So I'm just going to do string and I'm going to give it a uh, title because title is going to be unique already. Then I give it the attribute key and by giving the attribute key, um, ASP.NET Core of uh, NT framework, the ORM solution we're using within ASP.NET Core knows that this is ne this needs to be the primary key. If you would use a traditional primary key like this, then it will automatically know because it's called ID and it, it's, it's a number that it's uh, at the primary key. So you don't have to put the key attribute on there, but uh, we're going to use the title as a primary key. Primary key always needs to be unique and the title is going to be unique. So uh, first of all, because it's a primary key, there's an index on there. So we can really uh, quickly resolve those pages and it saves us storing another number we're not going to use. So yeah, 
Uh, and we're gonna give it a string content. So this variable is gonna contain all our HTML. And that's it, that's our whole model. Let's go to the application DB context. Here we're gonna link up that page model to our database. We do that by creating a public DB set of type page. And uh, no, the other one. Our page called pages. This is also a property. And uh, what we now can do is create a migration. A migration is a C sharp script that uh, gener well, that generates the, the database and the tables and the columns in this table as well. You'll see. Let's uh, open this project in File Explorer. Go to the command prompts and then do, we're going to type .NET EF migrations at uh, page migration. Can just ignore those. Uh, here, here we are. This is what we're looking for. Done. To undo this action, use EF migrations remove. So, what happened now is here a new file was created. 2019, the date, the time, page migration. So, we've got an up and a down. The up is create a table pages, add the column title of type string, add the column content of type string. This can never be null. This can be null. And then create a primary key, primary key pages, on the title. If we do down, so we revert this, then it will drop the table pages. So next step is hooking up our database. So I've got SQL Server Developer Edition running locally. If you Google for it, I'll put a link to it in the description as well. Let's go to the English page for our non-Dutch viewers. There we go. You can download the developer edition for free. It's, uh, it contains all the features of all versions of um, SQL Server. It's very handy to use. For production environments, especially for a website like this, you can use the express version. It's the free edition of SQL and it's free. Uh, it can contain a database up to 10 gigabytes. So if you need more than 10 gigabyte storage of your website, then either buy a license or switch to something like MySQL or Postgres. But for now, we're just going to use SQL Server because I already got that installed. Um, Cool thing, by the way, about using NT Framework. Uh, within ASP.NET Core, if you use NT Framework, you can easily switch between databases. So at the moment, we're setting it up with SQL, uh, uh, MSQL, but you can also set it up with MySQL, SQLite, or Postgres, or IBM products, and Oracle, and so on. So in the startup, it currently says use SQL Server. There's a lot of packages out there that will allow you to use, change this to use MySQL Server, use Postgres, and so on. Well, but here, SQL Server, that's out of the box. So it gets its connection string from the configuration. It's looking for a property called default connection. And that's going to be in our app settings JSON. It's already linked up a local DBA, DB. I don't want that. So I've already got a, a default string set up. Uh, this connects to the local environment, so it's double slash to escape it, single slash will give an error. Then it uses the database called, uh, yeah, the database called my website, and it uses Windows authentication out of the box. So, because it's running locally, you don't have to do anything fancy there. So, we've got our migration. Next step is to apply this migration to the database, because the fact that we generated the migration doesn't mean that it's in the database already. For this, we use the command.net ef database update. So NTT framework update the database. Press enter. It's gonna give us those weird errors again. And there we go. So commands done. It applied the migrations. Uh, there's already was already a default migration in there called create identity schema which creates all our user account tables that are necessary for ASP.NET Core identity. So next step, uh, this is set up. Let's actually use the database. Let's run it just to make sure it still works. Yeah, still looks good. Close it up. Okay. 
now let's uh continue with the admin part so we've got our website basic website structure out of the way we've got our menu we've created a, a data model we applied it uh, as we created the migration it's part of the database now we applied the migrations now it's time for our admin part and our editor so i'm gonna keep it really simple here so i'm gonna just create a list with uh, the names of the pages that are editable so a home uh, projects about me contact oh, and privacy policy okay now let's create the logic behind that let's go to the admin controller we're gonna create a new method here called edit page and uh, it wants to receive a string called title and it, first we're gonna look up if this record is already in the database so uh, for that we need database access so i'm gonna create a constructor here where we inject the application db context so the application application db context is uh, our database connection within asp.net core identity you've got uh, dependency injection which uses constructor injection so you can inject the application db context in this constructor it will automatically resolve and you can use the db context then i created a private read only field which is going to contain it so i can use the db context outside of the constructor for example in our views in our methods here in our view methods here so uh dependency injection is we're going to make a tutorial about that on a later point but for now it just uh, allows us to have asp.net core manage all our database connections and our instances and we don't have to worry about it so first uh let's use this uh first or default title equals title so whenever the title so th this is basically a, a where query so what this does is select from pages where title equals title the variable title only uh, because we're using empty framework we can write our sql with a, a c sharp code and it makes it also immediately database independent so whether there's postgres behind this or mysql or ms sql it's still gonna work so it gives us a, a bit of a abstraction and gives a bit of flexibility if it comes to database access so if the page is null because if it doesn't exist so what first or default means that it's going to get the first result where this is going to match. If it's not there, it's going to return the default of this uh, uh, of the type, so of the type page. And the default of an object is null. Therefore, if the page is null, that means we have uh, the page isn't found. So if the page is null, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new page. So we're going to say page is new page. And we're going to use our own page. So now this variable is null, and from this point on, it's a page variable. And we're going to give it the title that we receive. And then we're going to add it to the database. Add page. And we're going to save that. So here we're adding it to the database. And here we're actually, at this point, the SQL queries are generated that persist this. So there's an insert query in this case. Persist this data to the database. And then we're going to return the view with the page. So let's create that view. Let's copy paste this index. And this is going to call be edit page because that's the name of our method. Uh, go. Remove this. Edit page. This as an input. So. Um, model of type page then uh, let's create 
just put the title there so we know what we're editing then we're going to create a form and we're going to fill that later um, and this form is going to have a text area and an input and the input is going to have the id uh, actually the title because that's a primary key uh, type is hidden value is model dot title so we're doing this because uh, this form is is in the web browser so when this form is posted back to the server the server needs to know for which uh, object the data is being posted therefore so we're passing the title back again in our return request this is called content uh, let's, let's style this a little bit so uh, form group mm, don't have to do that for the hidden version of course and this is a uh, class form control so these are just some basic bootstrap classes that allow us to style the page a little bit nicer so let's actually run this uh, because then you can see what is actually happening under the hood while I'm typing. Go, so we're going to slash admin slash edit page title is test. So now it looks like this. If I remove this class, then it's going to look like this. This is a uh, it's not really that nice so that's why a bit of bootstrap there a little bit of love doesn't oh it makes it a lot better actually let's make it a little bit bigger so 10 rows is that enough nah, let's give it uh 40 rows there we go that's a little bit much so 30 rows is perfect Okay, and then we're going to add a submit button. Here again, um, save. This isn't really a pretty button, so because we've got bootstrap installed, we can use this. This primary. And now it looks a lot better. So let's center this. Perfect. Okay, but still, this isn't the editor of our dreams because we can type HTML here, of course, but I don't want it. I want to have a nice editor. So we're going to integrate something called Summer Note. Summer Note is which is what you get, editor. This is Summer Note. Hi. This is Summer Note. And you can just drop it in here and it's going to replace. Our text area with this fancy editor and it's gonna oh, generate HTML so perfect for our goal you can insert pictures which is base base 64 you can do a video URL so it's quite extensive it's an open source product it works with bootstrap it's really handy so getting started so what we're gonna do is we already got bootstrap because that's already in the basic setup we're gonna include summer notes so here we're gonna have to make sure this ends up in the section scripts there we go and then we're gonna run a script where are we gonna there we go. and this is gonna have the id summer note um because we are accessing this over uh, because we're running on hps we also need to do this on hps so there we go refresh there you have it we've got our fancy uh what you see is what you get editor hi i'm a fancy editor let's insert an image uh pictures this one is nice let's have it float right at 25 percent actually it's at 50 hi i can type on the left of this so this is quite awesome however when i press save 
nothing's really gonna happen because we haven't hooked this up yet. We've got our form, but the form doesn't really know where to go and it doesn't know where to go because we don't have a logic for that. So let's create that. We're gonna create an I action result called save page. It's gonna receive the title as input and it's gonna receive the HTML content. It's gonna be HTTP post because the data needs to be posted. You can also use HTTP get here, but uh, best practice, whenever you send data to the server, you use post. When you retrieve data from the server, you use get. So the default is get. This is a get call. This is a get call. And this is a post call. So again, we're going to retrieve the page from the database. If page is no, then we're going to return the view called error because then something's really wrong because it should have been created here. I have to pay. Otherwise, we're going to change the content with replace the content of the record with the content that we receive. If it's a new page, the content's going to be null, and here it's going to contain something. Then we're going to call save changes to persist this data to the database. Because we received this object here, it's a tracked object, so we can use save changes to change it, update it immediately in the database. And then we're going to redirect back. To the index uh, name of index so now it's got uh, when it hits here it's going to redirect back to this page so let's run this and i'm going to add it the html so we're going to hook this one up to asp controller admin and the asp action save page method post there we go so if i save it now uh, i need to refresh of course too bad this change is going to be lost but oh well i'm going to up upload the picture again and uh, it's when i have the at the right 50 percent hi this is a nice text actually we're just going to edit the home page immediately. Let's do that first. So apologies. Let's go to the index of the admin. Let's hook these up. So admin action, edit page, title, home. There we go projects about me I'm not going to use spaces in there and privacy policy there we go I'm going to go to the index of the admin page and then we're going to create it, edit the home let's create a header Welcome. Let's insert an image to the right, fifty percent. Style is going to be normal. There we go. Welcome. This is header one. On my awesome website site. And here we're going to insert another image. Left 50%. What do you, do you think of this awesome editor? So now, next step, let's make sure that whatever we created finds its way to here. So we're going to go to the home controller because that's where this page is coming from. And here we're going to inject the database as well. So I'm going to create a constructor. Typing is quite difficult.
but let's go to the home controller. So here we're going to create a constructor that receives the application db context as input. It's going to call it db context. I use a shortcut to create the read only field underscore db context. There we go. And here our page is db context of pages dot first or default title equals home i'm gonna pass that page on to the, the view i do the same here and this is called privacy policy this page is passed as well now let's go to this view so i press f12 f12 allows us to go to the view immediately we're really there that's something i'm gonna remove home page is fine this has a model of type page and then html dot raw model dot content so this outputs the raw html the raw content of this variable uh, without escaping it so this allows us to just have the html rendered so if we run this and we should see our new awesome web page hooked up and well there you go ah oh, i should have been an extra enter there let's change that real quick um hey this is not what i expected oh of course in the edit page we've got our text area here however if there's already data there we're not showing it so we need to do this and if i refresh then you'll see there we go let's put an extra enter there let's save let's go to home mm, a little bit better we still use some work but it's gonna be for later on so now we have to hook up the projects about me in the contact of course what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go stop this copy paste this from the home controller there we go be about me oh yeah we need to do this one go about me actually I can do just do this to be honest uh, contact and do this hey yeah, I just import it go to projects there we go yes there we have it next up is updating the pages so here we go contact me and last but not least projects so we're gonna put a question mark here reason for that is because if model is null, we haven't created the page yet. That means the content variable cannot be read because this is null. And this question mark basically means this. So if a model is null, then do HTML the raw model dot content.
So, this is all set up. Did I forget anything? No, let's run it. Okay, projects about me. There we go, we've got another question mark. We just did that in the projects part. That's the error I meant. And that's something we want to prevent. I'd rather have people visiting an empty page than an error. Content. It's up to you, of course, but yeah. This one as well. Okay, so now let's go to the admin part. Say hi at myemail.com. Save. Why isn't that working? Let's see, contact controller. Because it fetches the about me, the page there. Yeah, that's the thing with programming. You're gonna make bugs. And that's fine. As long as you fix them before you go to production. And again. There we go. Let's edit the about me. Hi, this is about me. Save. And there we go. And the projects. We've got it. So we've got all our basic pages set up. The content is not really well, production ready, but as a technical part, it's working. We've got our CMS and it's being rendered on the pages. So we've got our basic setup here. And there's only one thing left to do, and that's make sure that not everyone can access the admin panel. So we need to secure it because at the moment, if anyone would go to slash admin, they could open the admin panel and edit all the pages. That's something we really don't want to happen. So because we have ASP.NET Core identity installed, we can just do this. Authorize. If I run it now, you can't access the admin panel anymore without having a valid user account. This is all that's needed to prevent people from logging in. There you go. You first need to log in. However, the default template does allow people to register. So let's create an account for ourselves. Hello at mywebsite.com. My secret password. Register. And I've got access to my admin panel. Remember in the beginning that we updated that uh, login partial to show this whenever a user was logged in. Well, there you go. Also allows me to log out. Now, the next step is I want to edit those login and those register pages that the registration is only possible whenever a user already has an account. So the first account we're going to create manually. And from that moment on, only our account can create new accounts. So this is, we're not going to allow for public registration to update our website. That would be would be quite funny, but no. Um, we're also going to update the login page because if we not, if we would go to the login page, what you see is here on the top right, use another service. There are no other services. We're not only going to configure Facebook or Google login or something like that. We're just going to use the local account. So I want to style this page a little bit. Also want to have this removed register as a new user because, well, we're not going to allow that. So uh, for that, I need to have access to those HTML pages. By default, they're not provided in the template. However, we can generate them. So on, if we right click on the identity pages folder and we say add, we can choose new scaffolded item. And here we can go to identity. 
and use the identity scaffolder. Now we can select the pages we want to override. So we want to override the login page and the register. Wants to know which database context we're using. So we're going to select that. If you're using SQLite instead of SQL Server, make sure to check mark to, to put a mark there. Otherwise, the migrations or whatever it's generating, it's not going to work correctly. I'm going to close this because that's not important. Now we've got a login, CS, HTML, and a register. So let's go to the login. I'm going to remove this message. And we're going to remove the register part. And we're going to remove the whole part of an external service. More. And we're going to give this a width of 12 columns because it's bootstrap. So we have a 12 column layout system. Then we're going to go to register. Register is actually fine. We're going to go to the code behind. So if you, uh, you press the carrot there, then it's going to pop out. Now it says allow anonymous. We don't want that. Now you need an account to actually access this. Uh, let's run this, see if it works. Let's put this full screen. Welcome to our awesome website. We've got our projects, we've got our about me, we've got our contact. And then we're gonna go to slash admin. You're not gonna be able to log in here. If we go to the registration page manually, manually, it's not gonna allow it. So if I log in here in hello mywebsite.com, so the account I created earlier, then I can go to the admin panel and I can edit all the pages. Oh, here I can even change my password to fax authentication. Uh, basically GDPR stuff. It's it's really extensive. This so. It's quite cool. Um, I'm gonna put an admin link here as well, just to just to tidy it up. Because if I if I navigate away, I want to be able to navigate to our admin part quite easily. So here we're gonna another LE class nav item. Actually, let's just copy paste this. Control panel. Action index of the co controller admin. There you go. And then here, refresh. Got a control panel link here, which takes us to here. And I'm going to change the wording there as well. Where's, where's the admin? There we go. We call it control panel. Just to finish it. There you go. Now, if we want to add a new page, for example, here on the top, we actually made it quite easy for ourselves. So, for example, I want to have uh, a services page. I add the services controller. It's going to inherit from controller. I'm going to add a constructor that takes in the application DB context. We're going to create a private variable for that. We're going to create the I action result index. It's going to receive the page. Uh, services. Return a view with the page. I'm going to create that view. Let's copy paste this one. Uh, services. You see it? It's immediately resolved. Create edit title and update our admin view. Uh, let's do it below projects. Services. Services. Then we have to update our menu. So I want to have it here. Okay, let's run this. 
and you'll see it's gonna work immediately. You don't have to do anything. We've got our basic CMS set up, so I can immediately use this to create and update our website. So here the service is now empty. I can now go to services. Hi, I, this is where the services go. Save that, press services, and there you have it. So I want to thank you for watching. Uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Leave comments if you have any questions. I'll publish this project to GitHub and I'll put the link to it down in the description below. Thanks again and until next time.